Hey yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Miyako, and today I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about Logic in Lumber Tycoon 2. Everything from where to get every logical component to what they do and what other objects you can use in your contraptions. Anyways, logic is a huge aspect of Lumber Tycoon 2, and it's doubtful that we would still have a Lumber Tycoon without it. It's what allows players to build everything from simple garage doors or power cutters to some incredibly advanced things like entire calculators. It's very fun to get into, and you can build some pretty cool and functional systems which could even make your day-to-day -day life in Lumber Tycoon easier. I do, by the way, have several tutorials on wood systems using logic that assist you in processing wood to make your life easier, so if you do want to improve your wood system, I'll put those in the end cards at the end of the video. But with that said, let's see everything you need to know about logic. Before we begin, I would just like to say that if you have any questions along the way, first check if there's any pinned comments that may explain, and if not, comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. So let's start off with the basic components. These are the components you will use probably the most, and they can all be found in the back of Wood R Us. Now if you already know how to use all of the components in the back of Wood R Us, you can skip to the timestamp provided. So the first component is the lever. It costs $520, and once placed on your base, you can click E on the handle once to turn it on, and then once again if you want it off. Now that is pretty much it, but something you may not have known about levers is that they can actually be activated by powering the handle. Basically, you can send a signal to the handle of a lever while it's off, and when you activate the wire, it will turn the lever on for a bit, then it will turn off. If a continuous signal is applied, then the lever will start moving back and forth, and it will create a blinking output. Unfortunately, it is too fast for the wires to recognize the change though. Alright, next up we have the button, which is the most basic component of them all. It is 2x1 studs, and when you click E on the orange button, it will output a short signal. Shocker. Another thing to note, buttons can actually be activated using wires. If you supply a constant signal, once again, it will start blinking, but again, it is pretty useless because wires can't really recognize the blinking in time. Alright, next we have the pressure plate. Pressure plates are actually 4x4 studs, which makes them a pretty big activation device, but anyways, pressure plates generate a signal whenever something touches the wooden part of the plate, so that could be your character, wheels, items, you name it. Next, wires. Wires are the basis of all contraptions. Wires are used to hook logical components together and make them work. Wires have two modes, on and off. When they are on, they appear blue, and when they're off, they appear black. Wires also have two end caps on each side. These are your inputs and your outputs. When an end cap is touching the output of an activator, for example a lever, the wire will activate and appear blue. Similarly, when an activated wire hits the input of something that can be activated, it will activate that thing. You can hook end caps up with each other to extend a wire's length as well. Also, it is advisable that you wire your systems last, as wires are not bound by a grid system and thus can get in the way of things that are. So those are the basic components, you will most likely use those most of the time, but more advanced systems may require some more advanced components. To get advanced components, you will have to travel across the ocean via the ferry. A warning in advance, some components will be a little bit pricey, and getting across the ocean will cost you 800 money round trip. If this is your first time using the ferry, it stops at a dock located at the end of the road on this side of Wood R Us. The ferry might not be there though, so you may have to wait patiently for the ferry to arrive. It will take a maximum of 8 minutes for the ferry to arrive back at the dock. Once the ferry does arrive at the dock, you want to purchase a ticket for $400 unless you have the Super Hoover Game Pass. You can ask Hoover when he next runs and he will tell you when he next leaves the dock. So buy a ticket and wait patiently until the ferry leaves. You want to remain seated in your truck during the ride. The ferry stays at each dock for 4 minutes and takes 2 minutes to drive from one dock to the next, so wait patiently until you arrive at the other side. Oh. 
Alright, once you arrive at the other side, you want to follow the road until you see Link's logic. This is where you can buy all of the advanced components. So a quick overview of everything in Link's Logic and then we can get into what everything does. But over here you can find all of the neon wires, signal inverters, AND gates, OR gates, XOR gates, clock switches, wood detectors, lasers and laser detectors. And then over here you can find the signal sustain which is behind the signal delays. This one can get confusing. And then over here are your hatches, and that's pretty much it for the advanced components. Over here you can just find all of the basic components. Alright, so now let's go over these items in detail. Starting with neon wires. Neon wires can be found right behind Lincoln right here, and they behave the exact same way as regular wires, the key difference being that they emit light and glow when on. There are 8 different purchasable neon wire types and they all come at a price of $720 each. There is a ninth neon wire called the pink neon wire in the game files, however it was never added and only exploiters were able to get it. Since then however it has been duplicated countless times and you can purchase it from other players. One thing to note is that violet wires do look pretty similar to pink neon wires. Also, the more wire nodes, the brighter your wire will be. So neon wires are great for things like lighting and neon signs. But anyways, next up we have the signal inverter which can be found on the left wall of Link's logic. It does exactly as its name suggests, it converts a signal which is on to a signal that is off, and vice versa. So just wire components with arrows on the top in the direction that the arrow says. Your output should be on the side that the arrow is pointing to. Alright, next up is the AND gate. The AND gate can be found right next to the inverter and it takes two signals and provides an output only if both inputs are activated. This can be handy for say a door that only opens if two people are standing on both pressure plates. Alright, next up is the OR gate. This one generates an output if any input is activated. So one input, the other input, or both. Only if both inputs are off does the signal turn off. Alright, next up is the XOR gate. This one provides a signal only if one input is activated. It won't provide a signal if both are off or both are activated. It has to only be one signal. Alright, next up is the clock switch. This one was added somewhat recently and it detects the time of day. So there's a marker here that shows the time of day. Down here you'll see two buttons which when pressed will adjust the green and red markers. Between the red and green markers is a white line. When the black marker that shows the time of day is touching the white line, the clock switch provides a signal. So this could be useful for something like an automatic light system that turns on lights when it's night. Alright, next up is the wood detector. This one is very useful for things like sorting systems and combination locks. It costs 11000 so it is a bit on the pricey side, but anyways, to use it, take a tiny piece of wood and put it in the wood detector's hole up top. Once you do that, you'll notice a white laser coming out of it. The wood detector is now primed. Now the wood detector will provide an output only if the item tripping the laser is the wood type that corresponds to the wood type that you put in the hole of the wood detector. The wood does have to be in loose form to be detected by the way, so it can't be a structure like a wall. Alright, next we have the laser and laser detector. These ones rely on each other to work. To use them, take the laser and place it down, then take a laser detector and turn it 180 degrees so that the white part of the detector and laser face each other. Make sure that they are perfectly aligned. Now turn on the laser, and if you did it correctly, the laser detector should be providing a signal, and when the laser is tripped, the detector's output should be off. Usually you want the signal to be on when something trips the laser, so I'd recommend using the signal inverter. Okay, next we have hatches. These act like doors but with one major benefit and that is that they can be activated and deactivated from a single point. 
With doors, you have to wire up the doorknob for both the open and closed position to be able to open and close a door. With hatches, you don't have to worry about that and it just simplifies the system. Okay, finally we have the signal delay and signal sustain. What's the difference? Well, the signal delay and signal sustain are right next to each other in the store, the signal sustain being behind the signal delays. They look almost identical with the exception of the gaps between display cells on the delay, so it's easy to get the two confused. Basically, a signal delay takes an input and holds it and waits for however long you set it for before releasing the pulse for the duration of the original input. A signal sustain, on the other hand, keeps a signal constant for however long you set it for, so basically it takes a short pulse and makes it longer. So a signal delay takes an input and waits a little before releasing, and a signal sustain takes an input and makes it longer. Now there is one more type of logic I would like to mention, and that is icicle and spooky icicle lights. These act just like wires, but when activated, they emit light, and they are just decorative wire variants. Something cool you may not have known is that there is actually a magenta variant of the icicle lights. They were added into the game files around about the time that all of the other ones were added. But much like the pink neon wire, it was never put on store shelves, and to my knowledge, I don't think anyone has ever managed to exploit it in. Now there is a bunch of things that you can actually activate using logic, like any type of spawner, conveyor, and sawmill. You can activate chop saws and virtually any type of door, including car doors and cabinet doors. You can also activate firework launchers and any type of light. You can express modern paintings or trigger items that make sound. You can even light TNT, so most things that you can press E on to interact with, you can also activate using wires. You could also unbox items, however, I do believe that feature has been removed. Also, if you want to get a little bit more advanced in logic, you can check out my friend Electrotech's channel. He does a bunch of tutorials on how to do various things like make T flip flops and things like that. So hopefully this video has helped you understand logic a little bit better. I do have a bunch of videos on how you can use logic to improve your wood system if you want to improve your setup and perhaps make your life easier. But anyways, if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments or if you want a faster and better response, you can join my Discord server and contact me that way. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video once it's out.